Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. I'm Leslie Kendall, I'm the Chief Historian at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, here to talk about a very special car. During the 1930s, when you had a very expensive car, normally you bought just the chassis from the manufacturer and then had the body made by a coach builder. Well, in the early post-war era, that was still possible. And in 1953, Ghia took possession of two Cadillac chassis on which they put very special bodywork. And this is one of those two. It's a 1955 Cadillac Series 62 by Ghia, uh, one, of only, one of the only two ever made. And what distinguishes this car is the fact that it, it has such a sculptural quality about it. It has quad headlights, which are likely one of the very first uses of quad headlights on a vehicle uh, that are deeply set into the coachwork. It's got an egg crate grill that you would expect to see on an Italian car. Uh, and it's, it's got beautifully chrome plated details that don't overpower the car but they're more like, more like jewelry. They enhance the lines. They enhance the sculptural quality of the car. And we have to keep in mind that Italy during the 1950s was a force to be reckoned with in automobile styling. And this car exemplifies everything that, that Ghia and Italy was about. Uh, it was lower, it, it appeared longer, it, it was full of detailed invention, and it was uh, good enough for the, um, editors of Road and Track to put on the cover of the 1955 uh, January issue. Well, the interest of the 1953 Cadillac Ghia doesn't stop with the outside. It extends even into the interior, which is sublime even for a Cadillac. It's entirely leather, including the dashboard. It comes with all the Cadillac accessories, uh, power steering, power brakes. It even has power windows that were specially engineered by Ghia and it's strictly a two-seat automobile because what occupies what would normally be the rear seat is matching luggage. Two sets of matching luggage for those, those trips out of town. Now there are a few other interesting features that, that bear special attention on the car. If you look at the front wheels, you'll see that this is, this is a wire wheel, it's a genuine wire wheel. It's not a, an artificial clip-on over a disc wheel. 1953 was the year that Cadillac introduced the Eldorado, and the Eldorado was available with wire wheel covers, and this car has those, which is making it correct for the era, correct for a Cadillac. And take a look at the five chrome strips on the side. What these have the, the practical effect of doing is lowering the silhouette of the car even, even more than it already is. Because if you look at the, at the side, you're going to see something that is way lower than an, than an average Cadillac of 1953. Uh, something that looks, looks really other, otherworldly when you compare it to its American counterpart. One of the most ingenious things about the car is where Ghia positioned the fuel filler. Now it's got a regular gas cap, but you can only access it by means of a small hatch at the back of, of the five-finned detail on the rear. It's got a regular gas cap, unscrew it. You can put the gasoline in, screw it back, shut the door, ready to go. If you're fortunate enough to be able to see it from the top, what you'll notice is a chrome strip that runs the length of the hood and then picks up again at the very forward portion of the roof and extends all the way down to bisect the rear window. Uh, and in 1953, it was kind of unusual to have a split window car, but that's what they were doing in Italy. It was just another one of those styling affectations that they didn't want to let get away. If this car didn't have a badge, you could easily mistake it for an Alfa Romeo or a Ghia body Ferrari because the proportions are so nicely balanced on the, on the vehicle. Uh, again, it's, it, Ghia was experimenting with a few different styling themes like inset headlights uh, that call to mind um, uh, an Alfa Romeo 1900 because of its beautiful proportions. Ghia got it right in every way with, with the vehicle. Um, and, and what betrays the era that this was designed are a few Ghia characteristics that they were also using on other vehicles, like deep set headlights. And I also want to make a special call out to the quad headlight configuration on the car. 
probably one of the earliest quad headlight um, uh, cars that, that were ever built because in America, it was not allowed until 1958. But here we are, a car, car designed in 1953, uh, delivered uh, a short time later with quad headlights. Something else that makes this car uniquely Italian is the egg crate grill. Something very, very simple that virtually every Italian coach builder in the era was experimenting with. This is before the American influence reached Italy and a lot of the coach builders started using more aggressive design features. Something else interesting to take note of, this car may look like the car that was on the cover of the January 1955 issue of Road and Track, but it's not. Two were actually built, some say three, but the car that was on the cover of the Road and Track magazine differs from this car in just a couple of ways. It employs a little chromium plated beak that's just in front of the Cadillac insignia, two more tiers in the grill, which meant that the grill boxes were much smaller, and also it didn't make use of the bumper overriders. It was just a plain bumper. And that car still survives. So what we have here is not only an example of, of how different a car could be, but also the details to which a coach builder would go to satisfy your individual requirements. Thank you everyone for joining me as, as we took a walk around our 1953 Ghia Cadillac. We hope you'll be able to come to the Peterson Automotive Museum sometime soon. See it for yourself.